Hi, it's Miss Jennifer from Somerset Academy of Music, and today I'm here to tell you more than you ever wanted to know about octave signs. So this symbol right here is known as an octave sign in English. In Italian, it is called ottava alta, which literally means high octave, or all ottava, which means at the octave. So the first thing we need to know is what in the world is an octave? Well, the octave sign itself gives us a hint in just the way it looks. The number eight here is giving us a great big clue. And an octave in music literally means eight notes or eight tones. And on a piano, it means eight keys. So that would mean, for example, from like a C to the next C higher or a C to the next C lower is an octave. It's literally eight keys on the piano. So simple. So if an octave sign is written as it is here, and let's say it is over this note D on the piano. Instead of playing the D here where it is written, we would actually play the letter D an octave higher here. So it literally means to take where, what, wherever the note is written and simply play it an octave higher. So for example, it would sound like this. So the note is written sounding like this, but they want us to play, instead of that, the note that sounds an octave higher, like this, an octave or eight keys higher. Now the octave sign also should have at the end of it what's called a downstroke, and that tells you that's the end of the octave sign. Now an octave sign can definitely be used for more than one note. It can extend over a whole measure, a whole line, a whole page, or even for an entire song. So what they would do if we wanted to have all of these notes played an octave higher, let's put a few notes right here. They would extend the octave sign with either dashes or a dotted line, and then right after the last line to be played an octave higher, there should be the downstroke. And that's gonna tell you where to stop playing these particular notes an octave higher. Another thing you might see is the word loco, which in Italian means in place. So that means that you're gonna play the notes from this point on. So we've had this note, like this, these notes should be played in the octave in which they are actually written here on the staff. Now you may have noticed that sometimes music isn't always written exactly properly or in the correct form. So I'm gonna show you some other ways that you might see octave signs that mean the exact same thing as this, but are not exactly written in this same way. Sometimes you could see an octave sign simply written like this, without the dots or without the downstroke telling you where to end. And in this case, you should continue playing all of the notes octave higher. However, sometimes it is written incorrectly and the music may literally mean just this note is octave to be played an octave higher. In that case, you kind of have to just use your best judgment in, in playing the music and seeing what sounds right. Um, again, the proper way, if they wanted you to just play this note an octave higher, it should be followed by a downstroke, and if they want that smeared, if they want the octave sign to continue the entire line, then it should be dots or dashes all the way to the point at which they want you to play an octave higher. But again, sometimes that may not be written exactly that way. Another thing you might see is simply just the number eight. And again, it means the same thing. Sometimes it will just leave off the eight VA. Um, and it'll just say eight, and it can have the dashes and the downstroke, um, or they might not be there again as well. So, if they want you to play one note octave higher, again, it should be marked with the downstroke, unless the note is the last note of the song. So let's say here, this is your double bar line, and your song is ending here, then it would be acceptable to just write eight VA over the last note, and then obviously we do not need an end stroke because we're at the end of the song. Another important thing to know about octave signs is that they only affect the staff in which they are directly above or below, as we'll see later. So if, for example, you have an octave sign above these notes in the right hand, it does not affect the left hand. You would only play the right hand an octave higher, unless after the octave signs, they write the phrase both hands. In that case, and they would have a dot, dot, dot with a downstroke, again, continuing over to how long to do that. Both hands, only in that instance would both hands be affected by this octave sign in particular. Another thing that you might see that is 
again, not the proper way to write it, but you will see it sometimes, is they will have the 8VA written above this hand, and then sometimes they'll go ahead and write another 8VA over this hand. And again, this, same, this would mean the same thing. Both hands are octave higher. This, however, is not correct piano or music notation. In fact, the 8VA symbol, this particular octave sign, is supposed to be only used with a treble clef. It's not supposed to be used with any other clef, including alto clef. So again, you will see it sometimes used in, that in, in this type of situation, but it isn't correct. But what they are trying to tell you in this instance is to play both hands an octave higher. Okay, so another octave sign that we're gonna see sometimes on piano music, and I will first show you the correct way to write it, and then um, I'll show you some other ways that you might see it, would be the octave lower sign, which um, the proper way to write it is 8VA basa. And this is called ottava basa, which means low octave. So in this case, ottava basa, when it is written underneath the bass clef, it is telling you to play these notes an octave lower than where they're written. So again, it's written as this D, but you actually should play the one lower than that. So it'll sound an octave lower than where it's written. Okay, so again, it should be written ottava basa, and again, it would have dashes, and then at the end, an upstroke to indicate where it stops, or the word loco, works just like the other oct octave sign. Um, but again, sometimes what you could see instead, and this is acceptable, is instead of 8VA, another way that it could be written is just simply 8VB, which is a shortcut for ottava basa, dotted line with your upstroke. Okay, now, um, a third way you might see it, but it is entirely wrong, and you will see this often, this is, is all the time you'll see this, is 8VA, and they don't put the basa with the octave sign. Okay, so again, this symbol should only be used with the treble clef. We need the basa with it, or the B, to use it with the bass clef, but you are going to, you are going to see this symbol frequently on music. And again, what they're meaning when it is underneath is that you are going to play those notes an octave lower. Okay, something else you might see, and again, this is incorrect, this is not the proper way, way to write music, but you will see it, is here. You could see an 8VA under the notes, and here they're telling you to play it an octave lower. Um, you could see that, and it's also possible. I haven't seen this that I can recall, but I imagine it would happen. You could see 8VB, and again, it's incorrect, but I wouldn't be surprised if you saw that some more, somewhere. So again, both hands in this case, they're telling you to play an octave lower. Um, another way, if they wanted to write both hands an octave lower, the correct way would be 8VA basa, whoops, two S's, 8VA basa, both hands. That would be the proper way to indicate that both hands should be played an octave higher. But the truth is, is that when we want the right hand to play it an octave lower, um, there's much, uh, much more proper and just easier to read ways to do that, and that would be just to be writing these notes down an octave lower. So the, the composer really, instead of writing an octave sign for that, would just simply write the notes an octave lower. Um, the other thing that we can do, as you've probably seen this on music, is by use of bass clef in the treble clef on the treble staff. Um, that would indicate and be a much uh, more proper way to write low notes in, in the treble clef. But again, these are things that you're going to see. Whether or not they're correct, they happen in music. Okay, another octave sign that I want to tell you about today is called the quindi chasisma. I hope I said that right. And in Italian, that literally means 15th. And 15 in music is two octaves. Now I know you're about to say, but Miss Jennifer, two octaves can't be 15, that has to be 16. Eight plus eight is 16. Well, I'm here to tell you that in fact, two octaves is 15. And none of my students ever believe me when, um, when we learn about this. So I'll tell you what, go ahead, pause the video, go find a piano or your nearest keyboard and count out two octaves. Go ahead and pause the video, I'll wait.
Okay, so hopefully you've gone and you've found uh, your piano or your keyboard and you've counted out two octaves and now you know that yes indeed, two octaves is 15 keys. And that's because the first octave is eight keys, but the second octave, because they share the same note in the middle, is only seven more. So that's why it's 15. So in any case, the um, symbol for playing two octaves higher is 15 MA. And, um, and it follows the same rules as um, the other octave signs, it's gonna be placed above the notes, and that means to play them an octave higher. And again, we want the dotted line followed by the downstroke to indicate where to stop. Now, this is supposedly, again, only should be used with a treble clef, but occasionally you may see it down here on the bass clef, and in which case this isn't actually proper, but we'll see it like that sometimes. 15 MA with your dots, and your upstroke to indicate where you end the two octaves lower. And in this case, what you would do, the note is written here, but you would play it not one, but two octaves lower. So that's gonna be a really, a really low note. And so in that case, it, it can be used. It follows all the same rules as the, the regular octave sign. Okay, I have one final octave sign that I wanna share with you today, and this is called the Col Ottava. And it looks like this, C-O-L-L apostrophe A-V-A, okay? And col ottava means with the octave. Now what we do when we see a col ottava sign is if the, uh, the sign is placed above the notes, what we're going to do is we're going to still play this note where it is, but we're gonna add the same note an octave above to it. So we're gonna play an octave. So instead of just playing this D, we're gonna play that D plus the D above it. So it's a, it's a shorthand way to write octaves on the piano. So all of these notes that are underneath the cola tava sign would be played instead of as just one note, but two notes. This note plus the note above it. And when we have it written below the bass clef, col tava basa, it should be B, but it, sometimes you'll see it as A with the upstroke at the end. Again, we're going to play the note that's written and we're going to add, in this case, the note below it. So instead of playing one note, you're going to play two notes and all these notes like that. And it always, again, it's underneath, so you add the note below it. This is above, so you add the note higher. So hopefully that makes sense when trying to decipher which note to add. We wouldn't, with this sign, we wouldn't add the D here that wouldn't be, wouldn't be correct, we'd be adding the D that's above it there. And the same thing here, we wouldn't add the D here, we would add um, the one below down there. So I hope you found this information helpful, and now when you come across any one of these octave signs in your score, you should be able to at least figure out what they mean. Remember, sometimes they may not be written exactly as they should be, but um, once you play through the piece, you usually can use common sense to figure out exactly in which direction they're wanting you to add a note. And as always, the octave signs are always gonna be something that's changing the octave higher or lower. If it's above, go higher. If the octave sign's below, go lower. And that's the simplest and easiest way you can remember it. All right, well, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.